Hi, in this video I'll be covering how to create a dependent drop-down list. What does a dependent drop-down list do? Basically, it's a way to select items from a list that depends on values selected from another list. This example is going to be using the M365 dynamic array functions like filter, as well as cover the spill operator. I'll also cover how you can deal with duplicate or out of sort order entries using the unique and sort dynamic array functions. You'll also find out why the table feature is a valuable part of this solution. Also, near the end, I'll refer you to a previous way of doing this, and if you don't have M365 Excel with the dynamic array functions, this will help you out on your version. Lots to cover, so let's get started. So here I'm in a new sheet, and I have my two columns, my fruits and vegetables. I just copied uh, the first couple of rows of those before I did any changes in the demo. Now, I need two helper columns. I'm going to put helper... Uh, for cat one and then a helper for cat two, category two. Double let's select this column, double click to autofill. And the first one is gonna help me get the unique values here. So I only have fruits and vegetables, and the function to do that is unique. And this is one of those dynamic array functions. All I need to do is select my range here, click enter, and now you have my helper columns. It only picks out the unique functions here. And that's all I need for this column. Now my second column is if I pick one of these items, I will only want to show up these values. If I pick vegetables, I only want to show up that value. Now I want another helper column here, but before I do that, let's make our drop down. So I'm going to do drop down one, drop one, and then drop two. And you see why I did it this way because it kind of follows the logic a little bit better. So let's work on my first drop down. So I want my first drop down to be either fruits or vegetables. It's going to pick from here. Here what we want to do is we want to pick out our list here, our dynamic array here. So for my first drop down, I'm gonna type equals and I'm gonna select that range there and just type a hash mark there. Now what the hash mark denotes is it denotes the spilled range from my dynamic array. So that's kind of a special character or you can think of it as a shortcut character. Whenever we use these dynamic array functions, that hash mark, it indicates those range of values in the spilled range. So if I press enter, you'll see I have fruits and vegetables. Uh, another way you can think of it doing it is if I type equal and I selected my, my range here, it's gonna put that sign in there anyways. What we wanna do now is we wanna take this formula and put it into my data validation capabilities. I'm gonna control C to copy, press escape and delete that. And for this, I'm gonna go under data, under data validation here, where it says that go to list, and for my source, it's going to be that spilled range, that D3 hash. Click OK, and now it's created the dropdown. So I have either fruits or vegetables, right? And so now with this done, I can go to my second helper column, this helper category two. So what I'm going to say here is I'm going to use something called the filter function, another dynamic array function. Filter, press tab, and I want to filter this range, category two. And what I want to filter it by, I want to filter it by this category where it equals my dynamic, my selection here from the data validation. Press close the parentheses, press enter, and now you have that filter range. If I change this to vegetables, you'll see that that changed. And all I need to do now is do the same thing here. I, I need to reference E3. If I put equal sign and clicked on this, you can see that reference that spilled the range. I really didn't need to select that. I can just have type e, E3 hash sign. Control C to copy that, press escape. Let's get out of there and do another data validation. List data, data validation here. And for my other one, I'll just control V to paste that in there. Click OK. And now I have my data validation, right? So if I here, I go back to drop down one, click fruits. And here now it will select the Call it category two, grapes. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, what if we had some areas where we had some additions, right? So let's say that, for example, I have fruits here and I put lemons and you can see it didn't show up, right? It didn't show up here. You can see here where my range is fixed. It doesn't go to A12, only goes to A11. Let's take care of this. Let's delete fruits, lemon. Let's delete this, right? Delete that. And what I'm gonna do is turn this into table, control T to turn that into a table. My create table dialog box comes up. My table does have headers, click okay. And now this is table number three. And let's see if this works. So I'm gonna go and add another row, press tab. Let's make this 
fruits, lemon, and you can see that it's added lemon in there. And it's increased that range, right? So now I have a, instead of A11, A12. Same here. Instead of B11 or A11, B12, B11. So table is one of those great tools to let you do this to dynamically increase your range. And now you can see here, if I look at here, we have lemon here. So it's added that there. But what if we wanted to sort this? Now you might think, oh, I can go and sort it here and do that. But let's say we didn't want to do that. We want to have it automatically sort in our drop down here. So all I need to do is use a, another dynamic array function called sort. And I won't mess around with the other arguments. All I need to do is select my array here, which is this filter function, close the parentheses, press enter, lemon should show up in the middle. And you can see here, let me just reset this. I would do vegetables and celery. Let's set this back to fruits. And you'll notice that lemon's in the middle because it's in the middle here. So that has taken care of that one. Now, what if I had duplicates? This is a long list and we want to have our table just as an entry point. And sometimes people enter in, or you may forget that you've entered in something here. Let's say I enter in fruits and apples and you can see apples show up twice. Oh, I've also entered another row. So I'm gonna take that little guide here and just kind of move it up. So my table reference is just at, um, ends at B13. So what happened here now is I have apples again twice. So I have apples here twice. I don't want that to show up because if I look here, the drop down show it twice. So what we can do here is add another dynamic array function. You already probably know it. That's that unique function. And we'll just put that there, unique, press tab and I'll just wrap everything else within the unique function and those two apples will disappear. There's only one apple here and of course there's only one apple here. So that's the way that we can create a dependent drop-down list using the various dynamic array functions that are available now in Microsoft Office or M365. As you can see creating a dependent drop-down list with the newer dynamic array functions is easy. It's handy when you want to put together a dashboard and just make a data entry form for your users. If you don't have M365 Excel, you can still do this with name ranges and a data validation feature. I'll post a link to that video in the description below, so check it out. Thanks for watching, and to see more Excel videos like this, click the banner at the end.